everybody, it's Super Tie. I'm joined, as always, with my friend and cohort, Comic Book Brando. Uh, we're going to be talking about all the cool books that are coming out tomorrow, which is February 11th. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, anything that you want to bring up, just put it in the uh, you know little comment section down there, and we'll be answering it as quickly as possible. We'll talk about them, we'll mention you, we'll say hi, whatevs. Whatevs. Shoutouts. Uh, <laughs> do people do that still? This is for... Little Pete. Yeah. Over in, in Raytown. This is for Eight Finger Joe. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to start off with a very cool book that um, is part one of a two parter, sort of. Uh, this is Superman Heroes. The next one's going to be called Superman Villains. This one is basically all of the ramifications from Clark Kent outing himself as Superman. And this is all from the hero's perspective. You know, how does plastic man feel about it how does Hawkman? how does lois lane feel about everything going forward there's actually a really sweet story in here about jimmy olsen as well you know like he was just like yeah dude i knew the entire time and you know it was it was very sweet uh i really dug this it has like a lot of little stories like little vignettes happening with this big story happening you know as a bookend on it and it leads directly into the next issue which is going to be called superman villains highly recommend very awesome Sofizo says hi. Hey, Sofizo. That's an awesome name. Sofizo Graficos. Man, that's a really cool name. Right? Are you a villain? Is that your real name? Yeah. Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey. So just in time for the new movie from DC, we've got uh, a comic book, not tie-in. This is actually sort of a sequel to uh, Amanda Connor and Jimmy Palmiotti's run on Harley Quinn. However, you do note that it does have... Black Canary, Huntress, and uh, also features Renee Montoya mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Cassandra Cain. I think she's in this. Uh, just saw the movie last night, actually. Liked it a lot. I'm going to see fun. it. I'm going to see it uh, sometime this week, maybe. I'm watching it the whole time, and I'm thinking about the people that are complaining about this movie. I'm like, oh, do you do you not like movies of action, like nonstop? <laughs> yeah. It's such a great flick. It's fun. It's I, heard, I heard parts of it are hilarious, too. One of my favorite DC movies now. Nice. Mm. And it's, But yeah, it's got like this, a strong Gotham feel to it. Cool. Oh, I dug it a lot. I thought it was fun. How was Ewan McGregor? He, has he ever played a bad guy before? I don't think so. I don't remember him ever being playing bad, but he is like a, like a really sinister, yet strangely goofy bad guy. <laughs> Those are my favorites. He's really good. I mean, I just... There's sort of an unnecessary scene of, like, okay, you sold me on how bad he is. I don't need this. Oh, but, okay. Uh, he's really, he's good in this role. And I think he had a lot of fun being people. Back to the comics. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, fun team, fun characters. You've also got, like, the Devil Harleys in there. You've got uh, a bunch of characters that have showed up um, from the comic series. you got uh, uh, Poison Ivy shows up. And it's, it's sort of a, like a nice sort of a wrap-up for their run. So check this one out. Uh, a lot of fun. Check out that beautiful uh, cover. Yeah. It's our germ, right? I, th I believe so. So good. There's also one with Amanda Connor's artwork. So, uh, But she does the interior. It's so good. Give it a read. Sofizo says, I'm a hero, I think. No, my real name is Villain. Ha, I'm Shiloh. Enjoying this. Great. I'm super confused, but... Uh, I'm glad you're on our side. Villano discombobulate. <laughs> My next one is really strange. This is Green Lantern Season 2 from Grant Morrison and Leon Sharp. So after all the Season 1 thing as well as the Green Lantern Black Stars little three issue miniseries, this is the new season where all the Guardians of the Universe are now gone except for one and Hal Jordan has to go get the new ones. Uh, or like, you know, find a new replacement for them. And he has a uh, while that's happening, Oa is also like having a recruitment drive from all these different law enforcement agencies from all these different worlds, and Hal is teamed up with some sentient salt. Yeah. And uh, it was actually a really cool buddy cop kind of feel going for it for a little bit, because the, you know, the new salt, he's, uh, the sentient salt, he's like, ah, but procedure, and this, and this, and Hal's just like, improvise, go! Uh, I really enjoyed this a whole lot, uh, but it's all setting up for Hal having to go back to Earth. He's assigned back to his home planet, and he doesn't really want to go because, you know, he's been there, done that. He wants to be out in space and do crazy things, but he's unfortunately having to go back home. So, 
Yeah, really weird, a lot of made up words because Grant Morrison and space. The whole time, I just pictured Hal Jordan in a squad car, <laughs> like looking down at some fries and his. Oh, his just like. Just going, hey, buddy, you want to yeah. rub your shoulder on this a little bit or something? Yeah. Kind of bland. Yeah, it was pretty fun. I liked it. Nice. Sentient salt. X Men number six. Six. Number six. Number six. <laughs> salt, six, whatever. Um, so we've got Mystique, is where I ended up with Sook on that, uh, on the cover. And Raven Darkholm has agreed to be on the island, has agreed to help out, has agreed, agreed to go on missions. But she has not gotten what she's wanted out of the deal yet. Uh, we're going to find out a little bit more about that and some, some things that sort of happened in the past mm -hmm. and how uh, that might affect the future. Okay. Um, a little bit of time jumping in this issue. Uh, we're also getting to see what's happening with the the new Orcus. Oh, okay, uh, cool. What's happening there and, and what's being built? Uh, great stuff. I, I mean, really follows up on the House of X, Powers of Ten storyline. We're going to see a little bit more payoff from the things that happened in that storyline. Love it. Uh, just we say it every week. The X Men stuff is so good. So, so good. You should be reading. it. So good. Uh, there's also Excalibur and X Force coming out tomorrow too, but I didn't grab those for review just because we have so many other things so many to talk books. about. Uh, my next one, Batman's Grave, Warren Ellis and Brian Hitch. So this book has been really, like, parts of it are hilarious, but this one is all action, this whole entire issue. So Batman, the killer that he originally found in issue one, is now at Arkham Asylum and he goes to question him, but then this, what do they call it? I'm so sorry. Um, they, this group, this army, uh, what is it called? It's like scab, what, ah, I'm unprepared. Uh, Scorn, the Scorn army uh, is showing up and their whole mission now is to destroy the justice system. So now Batman has to save Jim Gordon. Uh, a lot of disturbing things in this issue as well as just straight out action the entire time. Like, it starts off a little slow, and then it's just like, nope, fight scene. Constantly. And, you know, you need that in a Batman book. Uh, it was really cool. I liked it a whole lot. And they even make fun of um, the bat signal a little bit. They're like, uh, Batman's like, Jim, why didn't you just call me? He was like, I don't have your phone number. I have to terrorize the city with this light so I can get your attention. I was like, yeah, that's great. <laughs> uh, so probably one of my favorite Batman books going on right now just because Warren Ellis is really thinking through like every aspect of being a detective. It's not just like rooftops, punch. It's like, hey, you're going to sit by a computer for 12 hours to figure out a problem. So really recommend this. Nice. Tartarus number one. Look at that gigantic comic. That is a huge comic. So, oh, and look at the back cover too. Back cover looks awesome. Beautiful. Uh, Awesome art style. Jack T. Cole is the artist, and Johnny Christmas is the writer. Johnny Christmas. That's a great name. Yeah. Mm. So, he was born on Halloween. <laughs> Tartarus is a like a planet that's used as a prison, and there's a criminal so nefarious that she's like on the bottom like level, like nine levels, like you got sort of like a, a Dante's Inferno kind, right. of, kind of jam going on there, which is nine levels at the bottom. Um, and she escapes. Okay. And she fights her way up. But why, what is she fighting for? What is worth, like, working your way with other prisoners through the entire prison system? Uh, you're going to find out in this issue. Uh, we're going to jump around a little bit. It's really cool. It's beautiful artwork. Uh, very... Boy, I'm going to... I'm going to say different things from what you said. The, uh, the solicitation said Breaking Bad meets most Eisley Cantina. Eh. I'm going to say more like Dante's Inferno, Game of Death. Okay. And The Ink Hall. Nice. Okay, cool. Is, is where a little bit more I'm at with on this thing. So very sci-fi, very uh, uh, sort of prison planety, um, big intense action, but you're also getting some deep story that... I have no idea where they're going with it yet because it's just the introductory issue, but it's super cool and you should check it out. It's a new series from Image and uh, a lot of comic. It's on my pull list, so I'm going to be reading it tonight. Right. I thought it was really good. Uh, my next one, Marvel's X, which is uh, Alex Ross and Jim Kruger's 
kind of prequel to Earth X and very far off sequel to Marvel's. Uh, basically, if you've never read Earth X, everybody gets superpowers. They all like they all are essentially becoming mutants. Um, if you've read Earth X, you know that's not really right. <laughs> Anyways, there's one kid who is still human. He doesn't have any powers. He's just the only normal human left on Earth, and he's trying to get to New York to find the heroes so he can like you know figure out what's going on, be protected. Uh, so he gets to New York with the help of a certain Ghost Rider. And he's looking for Spider-Man, because Spider-Man wants, you know, that's his hero. He, he's sure he can figure it out. Uh, it's really deep. Like, this kid, he's, you know, having his, you know, ideals shattered, but reassembled in a different way. Uh, Daredevil shows up, and he's nicer than Peter Parker is, and all this stuff. It's really crazy. The artwork's really solid as well. Uh, Earth-X, one of my all-time favorite stories. Marvel's as well, so whenever that has anything to do with that, I'm always in. Uh, you guys should be in on this, too, because it's pretty freaking good. I, I have no idea where it's gonna go. Uh, I know the next story, but I don't know what happens in the context of this one. So, very awesome. I like this a whole lot. Immortal Hulk number 31. Do you remember Zemnu? Yeah, the original Hulk. Yeah, the original Hulk. Um, do you remember. How do I. Do you remember the uh, new plastic toy or the Saturday morning cartoons? Do you remember all those wonderful things of your childhood? Yeah. So, what happens when uh, a being shows up purporting to be a hero? and also evoking memories that uh, make you think of fond things. The Hulk knows that this is a bad thing, but he can't quite explain or figure out. Plus, it's also not the smart Hulk. It's the, the big guy Hulk. Yeah, okay. Uh, so he has trouble with his words and everything, and he just does not know what to do about this. Well, maybe he knows a certain scientist that can help him out. Uh, really good. I just can't wait to see where they're going with this story arc, because they're taking... What was really like a throwaway character and yeah. doing something really interesting with this with this being and it's all tied in with the locks on corporation as well and i just i really dig every storyline they all feel a little bit different but it's got this great ongoing horror narrative and it's just fantastic so check this out and find out just how bad good memories can be I just reread all of the Immortal Hulk uh, trades, the one through five, uh, over the past couple of days, and it's been great. And yeah, spoiler alert, he's but I mean, cover. it's right there, dude. <laughs> I, I always, we very much respect spoiler alert space, but he, he's like right there. We are anti-spoilers. And there's Spider-Man and, you know, Daredevil. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, we got to find something to talk about these books. My next one is a new series, uh, Nebula, number one. So the character that, you know, could do in uh, all the Marvel movies, you know, started out as a villain, became a hero towards the end. She gets her own series now. So very interesting setup. So Nebula finds this tinkerer in space, and this guy invented a way, uh, a machine that can kind of pinpoint the future but not the way you think it will give you all the scenario if you give it all the scenarios it'll give you which one's the most likely to succeed by percentage chance does that make sense okay, okay. so she integrates it into herself but this guy who his name's devos he is the avatar of balance in the you know cosmos he's got it you know he's trying to take her out because he you know she's on his list uh so really cool really fun uh you know nebula has never really had like a huge moment of she shining had her own series i don't believe I don't she's ever so. had her own series but she's also you know she'll show up in a couple of pages of books here and there but she's never really had like her time to shine in the comics so i really enjoyed this and this jim bartell cover is just fantastic um she did have the infinity gauntlet for a minute she did for <laughs> just a minute um but yeah, I really enjoyed this. I wasn't really sure how I'd feel about it. I was like, yeah, I'll pick it up, give it a shot. It's a number one, and I wasn't let down. And it has a really cool last page. Figure out what's going to be happening with the rest of the series. Super great. Loved it. I did really like that Jen Bartel cover. Too. Yeah, it's <clears throat> awesome. Moonshine number 16. One of my top favorite comics. I get so jazzed every time I see it's coming out this week. Uh, Blue Perdo is a werewolf. Let's uh -oh. just say what it is. He's a werewolf. He's a lycanthrope, like lycanthrope, and he is a big monster. Now, he's under the control of his girlfriend's ex. Cool. That's a bad situation to be in. 
Um, so no one has too much choice. Everyone's sort of under the sway of this man. But is this man under the sway of another force? Uh, plus zombies. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> There's all sorts of hoodoo in the swamps. And uh, Brian Azzarello and Eduardo Riso, uh, my, one of my top favorite creative teams of all time, I just are doing this great atmospheric sort of like 1920s horror. And it's just so good. Do you ever read a book called Turf? Do you know what I'm talking about? Comic book turf? Yeah. It's written by the British guy. And uh, Tommy Lee Edwards did the art for it. Yeah, I read turf. Vampire stuff. Right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. if you if you like Moonshine, t check out this book called Turf. It's uh, gangsters versus vampires versus aliens. It, it's everything. And it was really fun. It was about uh, four or five years ago, right? Yeah, it was a while back. Uh, but it was like super solid. So if you like crime... 1920s books but with a little twist to it check that out too oh, i trying to remember the name of the british dude that wrote it it's the guy that owns like he has a copy of amazing fantasy 15 for his table for his coffee table oh i thought you meant just like sitting on his table i was like no dude. no it is it's just sitting on his table what but he's got like a nice copy and he's got i think he's got like a third copy or something like that he's the guy who did the um that great documentary searching for steve ditko oh what's his name ross jonathan ross that's right good job or a font of information. I got there. Thor number three, Donnie Cates and Nick Klein are telling the story of cosmic craziness with Thor. So, if you haven't been paying attention, Thor is now the Herald of Thunder with Galactus because there's this thing called the Black Winter happening, which destroyed our, uni our previous universe. And Galactus knows about it. And he's like, I have to destroy these five planets to get the power to fight this Black Winter. And Thor is like, nah, -uh, not without me. And then they both go off into space. <laughs> Hijinks ensue. Uh, but one of Thor's oldest and dearest friends show up and goes, Thor, what, what are you doing? You can't, can't be doing this. And Thor's like, don't question me. And then all out brawl. Uh, I'm trying to be as vague as possible. Is one of Thor's oldest friends? Yes. I have guesses. Yes. I won't share them. But I um, well, the cover kind of gives it away. Uh, no. <laughs> but uh, super great and it's very intense and like heartbreaking at moments because you know these these are two brothers and they're just like at opposite ends and sometimes you gotta punch your brother in the mouth to get them to listen to you so don't I know it yeah um, I've been punched a lot in the mouth so I need like, to start paying attention to people like in life or recently or oh just like I've been punched in the face a lot huh. yeah it's it's all right um, but anyways, it's, it's, okay. it's not the best. It kind of uh, sucks. Yeah, if anybody ever wants to feel it out, I got a permanent dent in my forehead from the last time. Um, anyways, uh, it, Thor, it's awesome. It's great. Donnie's doing a great job with it. Yeah. You had dented your head from getting punched in the mouth? Well, in the face. No. <laughs> you didn't say face. No, I said face. I said mouth. At first, and then mm. I got punched in the face. Mm. Iron Man 2020. Um, what we're sort of thinking of is the spiritual successor to Next Wave, a comic we loved very much a few years ago. Um, this is a lot of fun. This is Dan Slott, and he's having he's having a blast doing this. And and I'll tell you, I'm about 50/50 on like event books, but this has got my name all over. It. And if you like a fun, weird Marvel comic, this run is going to be great. Um, so we've got the <clears throat> sort of AI clone of Tony Stark is orchestrating a robot rebellion along with uh, such uh, accomplices as Machine Man, Awesome Android, uh, Machine Smith. I love Awesome Android. I also love Awesome Android. Herbie of the Fantastic Four fame. Um, One thing I love is all the other robots are like enamored with Herbie. They're like, oh, it's Herbie. He's here. Like they're, he's like a celebrity in robot Big culture. Star. I love that. Um, but there's Iron Man 2020, who's Arno Stark, who is trying to prevent this from happening or stop the, the revolution so everyone can work together to stop a bigger threat that's coming that no one else really knows about uh, because it's going to require humans and artificial intelligence working together. Uh, super fun, super weird. I'm really digging it. And like I said, usually with an event book, Maybe I'll stay on. I, I, I have a pretty short attention span when it comes to like the thing that's gonna change everything and then doesn't actually. But this is just a fun story. So give this one a read. It's just a couple issues in. There's gonna be new stuff. The next one's Machine Man, who's one of my favorite characters. So 
Give it a shot. Venom number 23, Venom Island part three. So this Venom book went very Predator mm. uh, for a little bit and it was awesome. Uh, but now this is kind of the end of this story arc. It's like a little mini story arc or it's like the penultimate issue to it. So Eddie is stuck on an island. That it was, it was the island that he lived on forever after he thought he killed Spider-Man. And his symbiote, Venom, gets kind of infected by Carnage symbiote, and then they like infect all the animals on there. So he's just basically like one man against everything. Uh, while all this is happening, Dylan, his son, uh, he finds this remnant of that everybody thinks is the Carnage symbiote, but it's actually Grindel, that dragon that Noel rides around. So like machinations within machinations are happening in this book. Um, Mark Bagley, is it Bagley or Bagley? I always pronounce it Bagley. Yeah. Mark is doing a really great <laughs> job Mark. on this. <laughs> and, uh, Mark B. Yeah, Mark B. Uh, I, I've said this before on this show many times. I was never really that huge of a Venom fan, but this series has been killing it. It's been awesome. Uh, highly recommend it. It's, uh, this story arc is also just a really great place to jump on. You know, all the Absolute Carnage stuff is done. You can jump on with this. It's been really fun. I like it a lot. And it's gruesome. Batman Pennyworth, R.I.P. So this is a multiple voices, writers, artists, kind of telling stories of the Bat family and their relation to Alfred. It's it's another uh, goodbye to the long-standing character. The character's been around for many decades. Been always been a part of the Batman mythos. Almost always been a part of the Batman mythos. He was the outsider. He was the outsider. Um, I don't know. I just which I. I almost half wonder are we gonna see the outsider return i kind of want it i mean i already miss alfred so yeah absolutely but uh, I, i'd take that um you remember what the outsider looked like he was white and he had all these like bubbles on him like pustules kind of sort of bizarro -y looking a yeah. little bit but yeah, yeah um yeah so this is a nice uh one shot that'll tell you more about the, you know, what all he did for the, the Batman front family and the Waynes as well. My last uh, single issue is a new series from Boom Studios. Boom Studios has been killing it with Something is Killing the Children, Once a Future. Uh, this one is by Simon Spurrier. It's called Alienated. Alienated is about three kids named Sam. There's uh, Samuel, Samir, and Samantha. And it's kind of like E.T., but instead of a nice, friendly alien that, you know, ouch, anything like that, it's actually a cosmic weapon of mass destruction. Ouch. But it's friendly to these kids because they just found them. And I showed Brandon a picture of this, and I was like, whoa, this is a left turn. Oh. It, it got pretty disturbing. Uh, really enjoyed this a whole lot. I'm going to be on this series. I love Simon Spurrier's work. Like, God Shaper was another book of his recently that I thought was just amazing. So, highly recommend this book. It was, uh, this might be my pick of the week, actually, because it was just like, all right, th let's figure out where this goes. Nice. Amazing Spider-Man number 39. So, J. Jonah Jameson is now at the <laughs> center. Cover. It's so good, right? Yeah. Gross. He's at the center of a new media empire, Threats and Menaces, starring J. Jonah Jameson. They do podcasting, they do stories, they do, they're just all over the internet. Um, Spider-Man feels obligated to do an interview with JJJ. Uh, looks like it doesn't go exactly as planned, despite Jonah trying to get uh, make up for his past, we'll say, indiscretions against Spider-Man, uh, dragging his name through the mud of New York for years. Yeah. Um, uh, meanwhile, we also have Chance's uh, strange casino in the sky where they bet on superhero fights and super... Uh, you know, they'll, they'll bet on anything superhero related. So, huh. really cool, really That's fun. That's a cool idea. It's a great idea. And uh, uh, he had brought up the Foreigner from the previous story arc. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Foreigner's lost some money. So, uh, there's a, a uh, response that uh, okay. is going to cue up what's going on in this story arc. So, a lot of fun, really good. You can see if these two get along or if they manage to tear each other apart before the end of the so was like the royalties from Hot Blooded not paying off anymore, or get it, foreigner? I thought that was great. Mm -hmm. Come on, that was good. This is no. 
Ah, uh, okay, I think it was great. No. Uh, tell us in the comments if that was a good one. Uh, my next one is Volume 1 of Reaver. Best way to describe this is the Dirty Dozen in a fantasy setting. Well, they're a half dozen, but it's essentially that. Like, all these prisoners and ne'er-do-wells in this fantasy world are uh, tasked with a mission. And keeping them all together is a guy who was uh, essentially branded as a traitor, but he's, you know, trying to earn his name back. But you got this crazy witch lady, got a barbarian dude, got this guy who's kind of a roguish spy. Uh, really fun, very interesting. I like mixing of genres a whole lot. Like, this is like a crazy, you know, spy book, but it's also in a fantasy world. So, yeah, uh, this is by Justin Jordan. He wrote that with Rebecca Isaacs as the artist. Uh, yeah, it's pretty darn crazy. I liked it a whole lot, so check it out. I like mixing uh, fantasy with other genres and, and seeing what happens. I always enjoy that. I also like mixing ice cream with breakfast cereal. A particular favorite uh, combination? Uh, okay. Vanilla chocolate chip ice cream with tricks. With tricks? Yeah. You know, I hate tricks. That rabbit can have the damn tricks. Well, but they're for kids. Or also, another really good one, uh, Captain Crunch with Crunch Berries with Strawberry Ice Cream. I think, I feel like I'm on board with like putting these maybe like on vanilla or something that isn't already its own flavor. Okay. I don't know how, how well, I mean, how well does Captain Crunch go with strawberry? That you'll find out. Try it out, it's amazing. Also, Captain Crunch, as much as I love it, is like chewing razors. Oh yeah, yeah, it'll destroy you. Rips the roof of my mouth apart. Yeah, it's 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 mean. It's a mean cereal. That's why Oops All Berries is so good. <laughs> <laughs> Undone by Blood, the Shadow of a Wanted Man. So this story, uh, this new Aftershock book, is set in 1971. Uh, she's got a book with her. She's reading an old pulp cowboy um, novel. And we're getting like snippets of that novel and it also ties in with her own revenge story. She returns to the town uh, that her entire family was murdered and she wants answers. Um, but she might have a little bit more, um, you know, grandiose ideas as given to her from this novel and, and she can actually back up. Um, yeah. Really cool, pretty intense. I'm very excited to see where they go with it. I love uh, the idea, I, well, I mean, I love 70 stories, I love old cowboy stories, when you smash them together like that, I am on board. So give this one a shot. Um, I don't know enough about the character yet, but I'm pretty stoked. Plus, you actually get like a whole other chapter of the uh, cowboy novel follow-up. They basically have chapter three illustrated as in the comic, but then after that is chapter four. Oh, okay. So it leaves off at a cliffhanger and you get to read the story. Oh, no, it's like the Conan continues. books where they have like a little chapter of a book. But... Well, but that was always unrelated to what was going on right. there. Whereas this actually continues the comic book aspect of the story that you just read. Cool. So I'm intrigued. Miles Morales, great responsibility. So this is another one of those really cool, almost digest size books. They're only like 12 bucks. Uh, a little bit less because we always do 10% off on our graphic novels, in case you didn't know. Uh, this collects uh, Ultimate Comics Spider-Man 22 through 28, uh, Cataclysm Ultimate Spider-Man 1 through 3, and Ultra Ultimate Spider-Man 200. Because, uh, you know, they added all the issues up of all the Ultimate Spider-Man things and making it 200. Uh, this is really solid stuff. This is Bendis. Uh, this is David Marquez, our friend David Marquez, doing just amazing Miles Morales stuff. I guess this is technically Volume 3 in the uh, Miles Morales Little Digest size things. But yeah, these are great for, you know, if you want to get a huge chunk of stories for not that much cash, definitely check these out. Gut Ghost. I love this book. I love this book too. This one's from Scout Comics. Um, I really. What's the name of the artist who does this? Uh, it's so. <laughs> it's so weird. weird. Enzo Garza, written and illustrated by um, Gutenberg Ghost. Uh, it's his adventures. It's kind of more like casually hanging out, not so much adventure -y, But yeah. uh, in this issue, he comes across Sensation Boom, uh, who is reading some Gut Ghost comics, Kay. which he did not know existed. So he sits down and gives a couple of them a read, and 
gives his opinions on what those comics are uh, in, a, uh, in relation to his life. Uh, really weird, really great art. Um, his whole thing is basically like lifting up his ghostliness and he's got a bunch of guts. Yeah. <laughs> Eats people sometimes. Yeah, he's got an ex-girlfriend who appears to be a devil girl. Sweet. Um, and the devil girl's new boyfriend has cracked me up in this. Weird comic, really good. If you like indie strangeness, this is exactly the kind of thing you should be checking out. I know our friend Dan is going to be loving this book. This is Billy Batson and the Magic of Shazam. So this has actually been out of print for a long time. This was issues. This is issues one through twelve of Billy Batson and the Magic of Shazam. Mike Kunkel. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, Mike Kunkel, uh, who also did Hero Bear. Um, yeah, it's just a really fun Shazam story, but good for all ages. This is good for kids. This is good. Kind of like you know uh, Shazam and the Monster Society of Evil. Uh, this is really awesome and fun and lighthearted and sweet and silly and giant robots uh, Like all these things like I, I actually genuinely loved this book. It was really great. and I'm very happy that it's back out. Nice. Yeah <laughs> Dan says great series. Yeah, is there is there a Shazam book you don't like Dan? Yeah uh, Space Bandits by Mark Milla and Matteo Scalera uh, Sci-fi which seemed to be kind of a thing that Mark was getting into a little bit in the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got like Outlaw, Bandit. Um, they've both betrayed by those closest to them. Uh, so they they meet and they team up and they're going to try to like get some vengeance. Really cool if you're a fan of like um, like Cowboy Bebop. Uh, you get like some kind of like cool space bounty hunting. Little Firefly. On, little Firefly in there. Isn't that the one where like the 80s are like really popular yes. in space because it just took it forever for the trends to get <laughs> to, out there? To get out there, yeah. Yeah. So you've got like a very atmospheric 80s uh, sci fi adventure revenge story. Uh, a lot of fun. I love, I love what Miller does with a short story. I think he could do more in six issues than most can. Just period. It's just like a really good, um, I'll say, cinematic flair for comics. So give this one a read. Um, it's from that uh, Netflix brand O Comics and Image. So yeah, give it a shot. My last one is a book that I'm very, very fond of. It's Animal Man by Grant Morrison, book one. One of my all-time favorites. This uh, is a mind blank, uh, if you've never read it, read it before. So, let's be honest, Animal Man is kind of a corny superhero. He has animal powers. Uh, he doesn't turn into an animal, no. But if he uses them, like, near a dog, he can smell like a dog. If he's near birds, he can fly, but not by flapping his wings. Uh, <laughs> so... He's a cheesy character, let's be honest. But when Grant Morrison got a hold of this, it became one of the best metafictions I've ever read. I actually wrote a paper about this for the National Pop Culture Association. So, like, imagine me, this doofus, giving a presentation about metafiction to all these professors and people, like, oh yeah, well, let me tell you about this. There are a lot of comics that owe uh, this Animal Man run. Yeah sort of like their twists <laughs> yeah so like there's uh th so this is the first of you know grant morrison's run it's uh, i believe it's issues one through 13 as well as secret origins number 39 uh it's fantastic it gets everywhere between you know sense of self vegetarianism um uh, you know bonds of family loss like it's it's an emotional roller coaster and parts of it are just straight up fun and, and it's a little bit of education on dc characters oh yeah like, like i i had to ref, uh, refer to who's who in the dc universe a lot when I was yeah that. this is so solid uh, like all the soft cover of grant morrison's animal man stuff has been out of print for like three years so i'm glad that other people can now read this i can't recommend this enough uh, this is my top pick for graphic novels this week Ooh. yeah and hey look what's here Fantastic Four, grand design. We were supposed to get this last week, weren't we? Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Well, finally, you can get it in your hot little hands. So. <laughs> Ooh. You ever heard that? Hot little hands? No. Yeah, it's nope. Okay. Tom Scioli, who has a uh, already Kirby-esque art style, um, tackles the history of the Fantastic Four, Marvel's first family, in the beautiful grand design uh, tradition. Style. Tradition style, whatever, format uh, was the word I was kind of trying to find there. Mm -hmm. um, yes, 
So I love this picture. Yeah, it's so this is good. great. That's like some classic, like new classic Fantastic Four imagery. I really dig it. Um, and uh, yeah, if you like the X Men run, check out the Fantastic Four. Uh, it's got a different art style, but one that's like really lends itself to that team. This dude packs so much stuff in that book. Like, if you've if you've opened the single issues, you're just like, oh my god! There's like eight issues worth of material on page one. A lot, of, like, a lot of little details in there. A lot of, a lot of small panels, but presented much larger in the nice treasury style. Let's talk about what's coming up. Uh, two days from now, we have Ladies' Night, uh, Galentine's Day. There's gonna be some drinks, some snacks, some movies, some games general hangout for all lady types uh dudes not welcome so uh you know ladies come on out have fun i'm told they're great yeah yeah uh what do you got going on uh well tonight uh there will be at the outlaw moon games facebook page will be a live streaming some dungeons and dragons bard got us into a lot of trouble and uh who knows what's going to happen next I'm voting throw the bard to the dragon, but whatever. <clears throat> gotcha. Um, also, we're playing some uh, 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 Magic, Magic the Gathering <laughs> on Friday, and our game nights on Saturdays as well. Cool. Uh, next Tuesday, Brandon and I are going to record the beginning episode of our podcast. So we're deciding on a name, so yeah. we don't have a name for you, but by next week we'll have a name and some social media to turn you towards Yeah. so that you can uh, enjoy our witty rep heart A uh, through SoundCloud or whatever we post it on. Are we going to be uh, censoring it or is it going to be like, you know, rated R? Can we like, can we say some swear words? I think we'll work a little bluer than we do here. Okay. So, yeah, since it's... I'm filtering myself a lot in these videos, so... <laughs> usually. Yeah, usually. <laughs> Sometimes you'll, you'll say things that you don't know quite what you're saying, but that's fun. Yeah. Uh, but this time I'll get to call you on it. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, so we'll be doing a podcast, which is going to touch on comics, movies, video games, life. whatever. Life. I mean, it's just going to be us rambling like we do. Nice. Um, you know, just kind of, we, we, we're going to have like topics set up. Um, maybe we'll stick with them. Maybe we'll just completely divert to something else. Uh, but it's going to be fun. Uh, the couple names that we have it boiled down to are, are good. So we're going to seek some, uh, we're going to consult with some experts in naming things. Yeah. Uh, I don't got anything else. You got anything else? Just looking forward to that. Just yeah. uh, making you all listen to us say stupid things about stupid things i guess stupid things about stupid things that's us that's in a, a good, nutshell that's a good name <laughs> well cool well you can follow me at super tie denton one you can follow you at comic book brandon you can follow both of us at austin books and we will see you throughout the week hopefully tomorrow toodles